I'm done long way round and long way down. I'm starting a new adventure. So I'm going to go from my hometown in Ireland, across Eastern Europe, the Middle East, through Asia, down into Indonesia, and eventually into Sydney, Australia, by any means. <laughs> Using any transport that's appropriate to the country that we're traveling through, by land or sea, and only taking an aeroplane at the last resort. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I've got altitude sickness. Get me down. I'm on top of the world. This time, there's only three of us on the expedition. Myself, yeah. my good friend Russ, and Mungo the cameraman. I mean, look at us. There we are. Amazing. whole thing wrong. Thank God there's no traffic. Whoa, whoa. It's a rip-off Mercedes. <laughs> Just thinking how lucky I am to be on this trip. This is what you sort of dream about when you're a little boy. Oh, this is fantastic. We're on the Iranian Express party train. We've got some ice water and some pineapple juice. So we're going to find a dow and she's going to take us across to Dubai. Our luck might have run out. And then the security came. It looks pretty hopeless, really, for the Dow. Managed to speak to all the right people, but they've all said the same thing that you, know, you, you need the stamp out of Iran and that the DAOs don't, aren't part of that. The DAOs are an embargo, basically, they go through the system. Now we're worried that we may not be able to get tickets for the ferry, which would be a real pain in the ass because we need to get across to Dubai to meet the big ship that goes to India. So, look, have you got the tickets reserved? Yeah, we got four tickets, and Thursday, seven o'clock, we should be there. We've had to race through Iran to get this container ship from Dubai to India. And um, we finally got the tickets for the ferry to get to Dubai so we can relax and enjoy the rest of the time here in Iran. Look, there he is. Oh, yes. We got him. <laughs> I got so bitten last night, I can't tell you. There's that mosquito. I killed three of these last night. And the last one I killed last night was this one. Look at this one. See that? That's blood. And I killed that mosquito, and that's my blood. Mine, that is. It's 3,220,000 real here. <laughs> I've never held three million in my hand. Uh, but this is to buy, basically all of this will go to buy the tickets um, to get on the ferry. It's such a lot of money, isn't it? It's only about, that's about $350 there. You know these all made in Australia? Yeah, I saw that sign. I'd say Perth. is actually a catamaran and it's really really fast it does about 28 knots and that's about 32 miles an hour really amazing we're going so fast so unbelievably fast we've crossed the persian gulf from bandabas to dubai where we're going to join the crew of a cargo ship to take us to india this Sunday today, Sunday the 11th, but the boat doesn't leave until Monday morning. But we have to clear customs and go through all that because it's not a normal place to do all that custom stuff. Anyway, we're leaving paradise. And this is paradise here. Look at that. It's 
So if that's all there, look, that stuff in the distance just over there, that's the docks. That's where we're going to collect the cargo ship from. <laughs> the most wacky bit of transport we've had so far. This is a massive container ship. Look how busy everything is here. There are just truck after truck after truck with these huge containers lifting it up into our ship. This is just enormous. You can probably fit a lot of Chelsea football ground just on the front of this boat. Hiya. You, Mr. Charlie. I am. I'm David Burnby. David, nice, nice to see you. Thank you very much, yeah. Quite steep steps, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> Why are you so sorry? Oh, no reason. It's just, uh, <clears throat> there's nothing in here except lead. I just like to carry it around. This is my room, guy. Look at this. I've got a DVD player. Look at that, it's strapped down. Strap a TV to me. Uh, in my bed here. Is that how long it is? Yeah. Get off. 270 metres. 270 metres. I might do a couple of laps, you know, tomorrow morning. Because, you know, I'm that type of guy. Look, here we go. Everything is so big. I mean, this the rope is enormous. Well, we're leaving Dubai now, and our next stop is Mumbai in India. It's going to take us uh, three nights, two days and three nights to get there. So we're sitting here on the bridge. It's dark because um, why is it dark? There's clocks back there. Well, obviously the sun's got them back. <laughs> <laughs> It's really difficult to film here tonight because they turn all the lights out so you can basically see what's going on outside. And you've got to be really careful. The pilot guy, he takes it out because he knows this place really well. This is the pilot boat now, and they're just picking him up. There he is, there he is. When you come out of Jebel Ali Harbour, then the pilot will hop out the side of the boat. Wow, look at that. That's it, he's done. It all just runs like clockwork. It all just goes like, like clockwork. It's amazing to sort of see. Wow. Bye-bye. That really is the end of Dubai, isn't it? This is what I'm worried about. Be vigilant in pirate areas. <laughs> Don't want one of those coming over to you. And apparently we're going right through a pirate area as well. Well, we finally left Jebel Ali, and we're traveling through the pirate-infested waters of the Persian Gulf, across the Arabian Sea to Mumbai in India. So they lock everything at night, and then no one's allowed outside, because they say that, you know, they, you don't want people taking pot shots at you. <laughs> This container ship, if you put it on its end, it would be taller than Canary Wharf. And it carries about 5,000 containers and it'll carry anything from flip-flops to blueberries from South America. It stops pretty much in every major cargo port and it goes from Britain all the way to Japan and it does that trip five times a year. 
They've got about 26 people split between British officers and the Filipino crew. Did you always want to be a captain when you started? I wanted to be an admiral. I wanted to be an admiral. <laughs> <laughs> you know, having watched the Titanic and all that kind of stuff and the stiff upper lip and captain stays with the ship, would you? <laughs> How long is your stint at sea? Ten weeks. Ten weeks on, ten weeks off. The hardest bits when you, when you go home, they've learned to cope without you. And you come home and you sort of upset their routine a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife calls it, you know, the third child arrives out. <laughs> and she says, you know, my household runs perfectly, she says. And when you get back, it's... Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a nuclear submarine. This is a real boys' toys stuff. It really is. You can sit there, and there are loads of big engines, there's big spare pistons. huge crankshaft that goes all the way to the prop, a solid straight from the edge and straight to the prop, and it only goes around at 85 revs. It's really low. This thing is huge, huge. We did the tank inspection today, which was just really cool. They have these ballast tanks, and they use the ballast tanks to put air or water in to balance the boat out, because, you know, one side might be slightly heavier than the other. It is, isn't that fantastic? It's a bit of home from home, really, isn't it? It's lovely. It's been lovely here, actually, the last few days on this ship. It's like a little, little bit of taste of, of Europe. It's um, 10 to 7 in the morning. Look at that. That there is India. And there's Mumbai, just there. I can't quite believe that we're here in India. We've, we've come from this huge container ship here, from over there, Dubai. I can't believe it. It's just incredible. There's like 30 ships just, just that I can see, and there's tiny little ones running around everywhere. It's going to be mad going in. I can see why they, you know, a good pilot man is, is, a, is a good asset to have here. It's just phenomenal. We've got the Indian pilot coming on board to take us into Mumbai. It's so cool. Here he comes. Hello. Uh, That's the FMS. FMS. Well, he didn't like that, did he? So uh, that was a definite no-no. So this is the drill. We've just been told by uh, the pilot, who's apparently not playing ball with us, uh, who says that um, we're not allowed to film. He's going to uh, contact security in the port. And uh, it doesn't look too good, to be honest. So fingers crossed we can sort it out. I've got a, we've actually got a Indian filming permit. So um, I'm going to catch that now and then go and show him. <sighs> Five flights of stairs. Got very upset that we filmed. We're filming him, and so he sort of reported us in to the port authorities. We're not allowed to film in the port authorities. Uh, and then he said we weren't allowed to film on the boat because since he was on the boat, then it was probably part of port authority, which is all just bollocks, really, all these idiots. That's the first time I've been able to catch up on the news since getting off the boat and to realize the devastation of 
the earthquake in China, and right in the province where we, we were going to go, uh, has just been devastated. And these stories of these school kids in school and just the school flattened, and they brought a body out that of this little girl who was still holding a pen in her hand. It's just devastating. The immediate sort of feeling that I got in India, I don't know, it's like a three-dimensional explosion on your eyes and ears and nose and smells. It's just a phenomenal place. Mumbai is incredible. It's just packed with people, and it's going to be fantastic to be here for a couple of days before we head off to Delhi. Yes, look in there. Mm -hmm. See yourself? Yes. You see yourself? I see. <laughs> so we'll follow this lady in. You're right, where are you going? Oh, look at this kiln here. Wow. Hey, Mina. Mina, she is here, who's helping us uh, translate. <laughs> <laughs> These are kilns. Do you reckon it's been here a long time, then? Very, Very long time. Very. One of the guys here was saying that apparently it's almost a thousand years that they've been making pots in this area. So that's quite impressive, isn't it? All this stuff here is uh, cotton, and that keeps the heat in for the, for the kilns to fire the pots and stuff. But they're quite beautiful pots. Can we go in and say hello? Look at that. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, wow, they're making pots. Do you know how long he's been, he's been making these pots for? When are you making <laughs> no. <laughs> Since this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, lady. Right. And this is her. her, her oh, yeah, you were asking in the After she got married and came, I think. Is he the businessman or is she the businessman? Well, she is. No, she is. He is. <laughs> I reckon she... she is. It's always the woman who's the one who understands everything. Let's go and have a chat with him. Hello. Hello. This is your husband. Fantastic. And your business? How much does one of these pots go for? Chalice for just 40, 50 rupees. So 50 people pot. And it looks pretty, it's quite labor intensive, isn't it? Because not only do you have to make them, you've got to get the kiln going. Mumbai is extraordinary. It has more millionaires than New York. And yet huge numbers live in poverty, earning as little as 10 pounds a week. It's great here, isn't it? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Sweaty bottom. I think I really wore the wrong bloody trousers. They just change colour. They go from very light green to really dark green around the sweaty areas. And my God, did my ass sweat yesterday. I was with Raina, who was is translating for us. And um, she goes, Charlie, why is there, is there something wrong with your bottom? Why is your bottom wet? It was like, oh, it's just sweat. And it's just um, the wrong kind of trousers to wear. Oh, God. So embarrassing. This is crazy. <laughs> this guy's cleaning this guy's ear out. Having a little, 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 little shoe polish and, and ear polish at the same time. <laughs> Don't see that every day, do you? Well, I'll tell you what, it is the 17th, and it's another beautiful day in Mumbai. And then we're off on this train today, so we've got to get this train at 4 o'clock. And um, it's, always, it's always a bit of a worry, isn't it, when you're... You've got to get the train. It's like, it's like the train, if you miss that train, it's not like another one for another hour, it's one for another day. And that kind of mucks everything up that you've kind of planned, isn't it? We took the ship through here with the banded country on the ship, and then we basically went, Ooh. 
on a straight line. Over the crease? Over the crease to Mumbai, yeah. And now we're um, heading and to then, Delhi, right? Yeah, yeah, on the night train. So we're going to leave here, get a local train to the main railway station. Or a taxi, yeah. local train right. to the train station. Well, London has black cabs, New York has yellow cabs, and Mumbai has black and yellow cabs. The Kali Pili cabs were built by Fiat in India since the early 60s. There are thousands of them in Mumbai alone. And although by law they shouldn't be more than 10 years old, most look ancient and look like they've been driven around the world at least a dozen times. Is it coming in on this platform? Who knows? There's a train coming in now. Steaming in. We're going to uh, Mumbai Central Station. Um, catch a train to Delhi. Wow! <laughs> that caught me a bit by surprise then. His face. <laughs> I was going to just peel his fingers off. <laughs> See you, mate. <laughs> No! India is the land of railways. Started by the British more than a century ago, it is the main form of transport for India's one billion people. I'm wearing, really wearing the wrong colours today. <laughs> station that we have to get off to to get the train to Delhi so we just got to get off quickly okay we've got plenty of time Whoa, oh oh where's Mungo oh. Jesus. oh Mungo's got it see ya guys see ya crazy there's no semblance of are the door shut or is everyone on board safely it just goes Mungo, what are, you, what, are you, what are you wearing? I've got a sweat rag on because sweat's dripping onto the camera and into my eyes. I know it's not cool, but it works. <sighs> it's so hot, I tell you. If you want a free sauna, come here. <laughs> Each train driver will hit 70 odd people in their driving career, which is a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of train drivers. The reported figure is that every month there are 500 uh, accidents slash death cases on the station because there are six million people who travel by trains every day in the million. Six million. Wow. So most of the people drive because of crossing the tracks. That's the number one reason. Second is, you know, while the train is moving, they'll be like bending outside like that. And a pole will come and then they just get wiped off. God, how do the ambulance guys feel? Because they're the ones who have to clean the mess up. Yeah, but that's their job, right? So, yeah. yeah that's hi. my driver, one of the best drivers nice I have, Magul. That's my doctor. Hi, how are yeah. you? Up until about four years ago, there were absolutely no ambulances in Mumbai. And this wealthy guy got together with five friends and they started this ambulance service. And there is now 50 ambulances in Mumbai. And if you're poor, you go for free. And if you're rich, you have to pay. We're stuck on here now till 10 o'clock tomorrow. So this leaves in 20 minutes. <laughs> Allergen. Very nice. It's not very private though, is it? Mm -hmm. It's not very private. I'm just intrigued as to whether we go on time. 5.40 and it ain't moving. Yes, it is now. Here we go. Right. I think that's the most informal departure I've ever had on a train. We're just going very, very slowly out of the station. It's 
look at this, a nice clean train. And right beside that, it's going to be chilly. Let's give you some time. Oh, yeah. Good old builder's tea. <clears throat> Here we go, champs. for me. It's a bit too chilly, you know. Well, we're going by sleeper train, which I'm really starting to hate, from Mumbai to India's capital city, Delhi. And it takes nearly 19 hours to travel 852 miles. Oh, man, really. The bathroom, what's your feet, man? It dicks. Really cheesy. It's pretty good, huh? I've got um, chicken curry and some sort of vegetable thing with rice. And I reckon this could be a little sort of naan bread. This is hot, whatever it is. It really is, like that. Felt a bit rough on the train last night. Felt dreadfully, dreadfully homesick. It was the first time ever that I actually wanted to go home. Any lads? <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh. <laughs> I don't like hanging out with guys. <laughs> but I was so relieved. I was so relieved. No, I'm just telling you. I just had a big dump just now. Blinder. Those um, knee, knee tremblers oh, are perfect. Thing. You know, because on the knee trembling, you crash down, you do your stuff, get some water, wash yourself out. With your hand? Mm, with your hand. Well, how can that be hygienic? Well, you're not I'd... scraping it like that. You're just putting a little bit of water on it, and you're, you're, as if you were, like, in a shower it or something like that. Hygienic. In a situation like this, I think it is. In, on, on a train where there's loads of people sitting on a toilet... I don't think it could be more hygienic. Because if you're Plus. using your hand to touch your ass, that cannot be more high. Water with water, and, yes, and, and then you wash your hands. There's no, but you can't. There's soap and listen, water in the toilet. There's a whole the, the scientific the study at university done about the efficiency. Oh of yeah, water. right. Listen, if you if you're touching something like that, oh for God's sake, what are we talking about here? Make the tea. Ah, breakfast. Ah. Thank you very much. Omelette. Yeah, chef. Omelette. Yep. Thank you. Very good. Mumbai to Delhi is the same as the south coast of the tip of Scotland. That's what we did while we were sleeping. So we're going up to here, to here, to Delhi. It's interesting out there. And Just people, people everywhere. There's a lot of poverty. Always, I suppose, by the train tracks as you go into, into town. Again. I'm gonna get to, to, to the hotel. Go through town, it's about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we have a little race. We must be first. Okay, we better get in to cheat. Let's get it going before he can. Hello! First to Imperial! It's a race! Oh, no, he has to to us. I just ran forward onto this meter here with my chest. I'm okay.
Do you know, it's funny, it seems like that there are millions of tuk-tuks in India, and I've just found out that 70,000 of them are in Delhi. We're in the lead now again. I think it's just getting faster. Tuk-tuks were built from the 1950s onwards, and they're small size with their little three wheels and their amazing eight horsepower. It means they're just absolutely perfect to take people around these crazy sort of messed up roads. We turned in first, technically. Well. <sighs> We're going to be slumming it again today because uh, I think we had a nice hotel last night before last, and so we thought we'd go to a, an appropriate hotel tonight. I think tomorrow night we've got a rough I must admit a tiny pang of um, guilt. That's not the right word, but um, it's such a beautiful hotel. I mean, this is travelling in style. Oh, it's right. part of the experience, Jamie. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. That is incredible. Look at that. That is amazing. OK. So I had a very nice um, bit of sightseeing today, actually. Went down to see the Red Fort. And it was just stunning. Beautiful place. Finished in 1648. It took 10 years to build. The Red Fort is in the centre of Delhi, and it was built by the Mughal Shahir Jahan. And apparently he also built the Taj Mahal, which we're going to go see later. There's a poem there which says, if heaven is on earth, it is here, it is here, it is here. Can you imagine these have silk curtains coming down here, and all this with silver and gold ceiling? It was a bloody decadent guy, though. My God, he had pretty much everything. And... 120 fountains, all hand-pumped by people and all that kind of stuff, and, and thousands and thousands of servants. I'm not going to try that again. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? I love that. So they're doing all this smoke here because there's loads and loads and loads of malaria mosquitoes. So they're fumigating the hotel for this evening when the mosquitoes come out. How bizarre is that, huh? That's just... It's whack, man. It's just whacked out. I had some sad news today. My grandfather, back in the UK, has died. When he was 19 years old, he was a Spitfire pilot. I keep on going away on these trips with my work, and I've said goodbye to him now probably three or four times. And then, of course, this last time was the real one. And I do feel incredibly far away right now. I think his grandfather meant a huge amount to him. And I'm really sorry. And I'm sorry for Mungo, and I'm sorry for his family. I really am. It's monsoon season, and, and we're riding bikes today. <laughs> we're going on the Royal Enfield Bullets today, and uh, they're originally built in Britain, but now only built in India by hand. And they're a 500cc engine, single cylinder, and do a whapping speed of 80 miles an hour. <laughs> These are the bikes. They are so cool, aren't they? Just beautiful. <sighs> they haven't changed much. This is the more modern one. This is the one with the electric start. But if you put an old one beside this one, you barely see any changes. <laughs> We're hoping to leave at 11, which is, it's 11 now. And the helmets aren't here, Russ isn't here. Well, we're going on these fabulous bikes from Delhi to Agra. He's going to be in a bad mood, isn't he? He doesn't like shopping at all, does he? No, boots, mate. Do you get water boost? Yeah. 
God, you must have really enjoyed this, Russ. Huh? You must Shopping. have really enjoyed this. Shopping in Delhi. Isn't that your favourite thing to do? No. All of them for sticker by any means. <laughs> through India on a motorbike. It's just crazy on the streets. I mean, we're absolutely mental. It's going to be like this the whole way. Things just crowded the whole way, I reckon. So many people. So much on the hard ground. We're about probably two thirds of the way to um, the Taj Mahal, and um, poor Mungo has twisted his knee or done something to his knee in the back of the truck when he was filming. So he's got quite a lot of pain, poor little fella. I can't put pressure on it, I can't really walk on it without it feels like somebody's stabbing me in the, in the knee. Um, so it's a bit of a worry, really. I'm not very happy. So um, we're going to carry on filming today. Charlie's got a helmet cam on now, and uh, hopefully that will be OK. We'll just have to see how, how my knee is. But um, it's a real bummer. This is my view of India on the back of an Enfield. And it's amazing. I mean, the, the types of things that you see here are absolutely incredible. Look how many people there are up here. There's just hundreds of people. got killed then. There's a bloody truck driving the wrong way up the road. How the f are you supposed to do that? That is just outrageous. Man, there's a lot of trucks here. They must have... There's another one driving up the wrong way of the road. That's just crazy. Um, I've just pulled up because I've got a bit of a leak going on down here. Can you see it? Just here. And um, it seems to be coming from here, from the airbox. Yeah, there's lots of oil in the airbox. It seems to go all over the back tire, which is not a good thing. I swear to God, this is true. Stopped at the petrol station just there. And the guy said, oh, no, there's an Enfield agent just here. <laughs> I swear, I promise on my life that that's how it's happened. He reckons I've torn cartilage. He says, he says, he says, classic. He says, classic thing. He said, if you've been kneeling down, you get a little twist, you can catch him between your bones. He said, you won't be able to straighten it. You feel like somebody's stabbing in the knee. Exactly what it is. Pop in there. Pop in there. What I hate though is like. I hate having to be helped. <laughs> I really struggle with it. I really struggle with it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Done. Isn't that fantastic? That's the bill. 137, which is about £1.60, which is three bucks. 
Nice morning, other than the fact our cameraman has gone down. And that's a real problem with the cameraman going down. We're going to make a flying visit to the Taj Mahal, otherwise, we might not be able to see it. But it's not ideal because Mungo is seeing the doctor later today, and we can't make any plans in case there's something seriously wrong with his leg. It's quite amazing that we're at the Taj Mahal, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. And it's an amazing place. It's 22 years and 20,000 people day and night to build that. You come 10,000 miles to come to the Taj Mahal for the sunrise, and now it's grey and windy. It's like Norfolk. The Taj Mahal was built about 350 years ago, and uh, the guy who built the Red Fort actually built it for his favourite wife as a tomb, and he's buried there as well beside her. So Jo Ford's our production manager and she went out to Delhi to collect some tapes for the edit and just happened to be there when Mungo hurt his knee. And now, believe it or not, she's the main camera person. So Jo's filming now for a bit. She's inexperienced. And if the framing, some, and if the framing sometimes is a little bit odd I'm or a bit out of sight, I'm only joking. Oh. He's got, he's got on the door, he's got a double barrel shotgun. That's if it all goes wrong, it'll put you down. Let me know if it feels. Yeah, it's really hurt. It hurts. This hurts? Yeah. This way. But this doesn't. It's, it's either a bruising or a pain. What you've got to do now is an MRI. MRI scan, that's the next thing to do. Okay. We had to pay up front for the scan, 3,500, um, and that works out at about 38 pounds. How much does it cost in London? Certainly not 38 quid. If his leg is bruised, he comes with us. Yeah. If his leg is broken, we have to fly him back. We have to get him back to Delhi tonight and fly him back to London tomorrow, yeah. and then we'll try and get him back out on the trip at some point in the future. Yes, there does seem to be minor tear. And we have a posterior hondulatory meniscus, grade 1 to 2 tear. You can't do anything about that. You can't fix that. No, you can't fix it. Uh, maybe three weeks. Oh, and the rest would be decided by doctors back home. Well, I've got two things. Number one is I want it to heal properly because otherwise it'll be an ongoing problem. Okay. And the other issue for me is I can bury my grandfather. It was funny, Mungo, at the hotel, and we had to sort of press on. He sort of looked quite lonely there, actually, left all alone. Poor guy. Well, poor Mungo's gone back to the UK, and we've pressed on to get to Campor by taxi. It is um, 10 to 3 in the morning. Can you believe it? We're doing that so we can get... leave this hotel, get a truck. So we're going to ask a few people here, and if they'll take us to one of these trucks, one of these mad trucks over here, we've got like double cabs. What's your name again? Rina? 
Oh, this guy here. Yeah. If we could get four people in this, it would be great. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> well, there we go. That's our truck. And uh, we're going to head towards Van Assey and that for a while. So we're off. On, it's it? got a big bounce on. We're here for about 120 miles. <laughs> I, know. I think I've hit the resonant frequency of the truck. We've got these amazing sort of double cab trucks, really well painted in the front, and got all that sort of personalised things. And, and there were a young bunch of guys, the two drivers and the, the son of the guy who owns the truck was in. It looked like that just really just snapped off. The plan is to get to Varanasi before sunset because we'd like to see the river Ganges before it gets dark. Seventy percent of the trucks here in India are built by Tata, and you see them absolutely everywhere. And they're one of the biggest companies in India. And in actual fact, they've just bought Jaguar and Land Rover. How long has he been a truck driver for? Eight years. 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 They're washing all the pots and pans and plates with this water that I just had tea from. <laughs> interesting, isn't it? To my morning exercise. That's when you smash your teeth out and send you off to hospital. And I'm chap of the world. So here we are on top of a truck in India. That's it. It's been fun. It's been really enjoyable. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Now, when I go along the, the roads now in India, I'm going to have a different perspective of all the trucks. It's nice, that. Really lovely. Nice bunch of guys. We're kind of running out of time. We, we, we've got to get this um, this boat at four to get to Varanasi for, during the day. I reckon we've got about 40 miles to go still. And now we're just stuck in a traffic jam. Look at this. Crazy, it's bumper to bumper. This is the bus station here. Nothing. Right, let's go and have a look on the street for a Jeep. I think the tuk tuk is going to be pretty slow. You can take us to Ramliga. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wish it luck. rent these sort of open crazy sort of old jeeps that look like American Second World War jeeps and so we jumped into that and my god we bounced around here the things no back suspension have you got any lens cleaning cloths? Uh, is your t-shirt then? Yeah. absolutely roasty yeah. that's three points on your license for excessive use of all <laughs> I 
Heathrow Railway crossing, look, they're squeezing under the barrier. To try and get across in front of the train. And here's the train. both sides of the level crossing, which means that when the gates open, everybody just hits in the middle like this, and then no one can go anywhere. But it's just, it's chaos. And when it comes to Jeeps, this is about as Jeepy as you can get. The Indians copied this from the US Jeep, you know, from the World War II, and, and the design is barely changed. We're at the fort now, but we've just got to figure out where the boat is. I'm going to stand up because I can barely get my ass. Oh! Woo! And so here we are at the Ganges. This is amazing. The old fort here that's right on it. They say it's very polluted, so don't fall in. Basically. We've left Kampur early so that we could do the last part of the journey to Varanasi on the magical river Ganges. And it's about 1500 miles long, and it is believed by the Hindus to be the goddess Ganja. And it's like, a bit like the Nile to the Egyptians, uh, and the whole of India's history is wrapped around this river. The Ganges is very wide in places, and with few bridges, these rowing boats are kept pretty busy. I'm rowing a boat up to Vernassi, to one of the holiest places on Earth. Isn't that kind of cool, to arrive on a boat like this, in a place like that? Varanasi is about 3,000 years old, and uh, it's full of temples, and it's an incredibly important holy city for, for Hindus and Buddhists. We're here. Can you believe it? It's fantastic. I feel quite spiritual already. Mungo. Well, how'd it go? Yeah, it went well. It went well. Um, the prayer was a bit more serious than they thought it was. Oh, really? Yeah, so basically they, they removed most of the cartilage, which oh. from my point of view. But uh, the good news is, is that I should be fit and ready to come back out within two weeks, which is brilliant. I'll see you here in two weeks' time. Don't let me down. Yeah. No fault, I'll be there. All right, loads of love. All right, Charlie, cheers, mate. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, welcome aboard, Deepak. And hang on one sec. So, look, this is what, this is what Deepak looks like. Oh, and that police cameraman. Welcome aboard, Deepak. OK. OK. You see all these cows everywhere. They seem to just sort of wander around the streets. But how do cows live in the city? I mean, where do they eat? Where do they sleep? You never see a foreigner cycling a rickshaw, and there was this sort of ripple of laughter behind me as it went on. Basically, we're heading down towards the river. We wanted to have a look around and see... Hello, man. Hey, man, how are you? Hi. Hi, cow. It's hot work. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, 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 sorry. Are we OK? Sorry, Crashed sorry, into sorry. two rickshaws just then. <laughs> Woo! OK, you got it? Thank you very much. I think I've done enough of that. I feel quite hot and sweaty. Have I got a sweaty bottom? Sweaty? Yeah! Wow, look at that. 
It's beautiful. This is amazing. They look like there's about four people out there. They look like they're walking on water. That's not it's water. The it's the sand on the other side of the thing. I thought it was the brown water. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot, eh? Oh, Charlie Borman talks again, as usual. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. I can't believe that we're here. I think it's wonderful, wonderful, magical, stunning place, India. And I've, everybody I've met, I've never met, I haven't met one person who's been negative at all since I've been here. And, um, so I love it here. Absolutely love it here. Well, we can't go any further because we can't take photos, obviously, because people have been cremated and it's a private affair. But that goes on for 24 hours a day. And they come, you pay your taxes here. And if you're rich, you pay good money. If you're poor, you pay a little money. And then you get, you go and you can cremate. And people from all over India come here to do it. And even from outside of India, they bring the bodies back and are cremated here. steps going down into the Ganges and it's all about bathing yourself in the in the Ganges and cleansing your body and then offering up and saying that you know this is a beautiful world and praying for world peace and praying for people and praying for the people around them and cleansing your spirit and all this kind of stuff. There's something, there's something so special about this. There's, it's so beautiful and it makes you feel very calm and relaxed and my father always said that he said once you've come here you will always come back. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And it really gets under your skin. Well we've been traveling now for about six weeks and we've seen just so much stuff and I can't believe that we have months ahead of us. I just can't imagine what we're gonna be seeing, but I'm really, really excited. I love this tilt, it's just mad. So it's rain, but we get there in the time. <laughs> We're getting very far. Oh, whoa. Keep still. Riding elephants towards Kathmandu just sounds good, doesn't it? Bye bye. Bye bye. Makes the car faster. Yeah. That there is Kathmandu. <laughs> That's my helicopter, and that behind me, that's Everest. Global warming and the future in Earth, the climate wars, next here on BBC Two. While it's new comedy over on BBC Three, Johnny Vegas and Ralph Little in the music business, hoping to be massive. <laughs>